Telling detective story, a cloak and dagger action and a romantic drama, all these stories were taken from real life. The history of Kazakhstan is inseparable from the world history. Reflections on history, our version. The Call of Blood. Yellow bows, white shirts, a closer look at the teacher while they really wanted to look into the lens, but they don't question why there's a camera being used to meeting frequent guests. They know that guests come to the museum. School number 154 in Almaty. A standard general education institution with an unusual name, as it's named after the Hungarian expert Istvan Mandoki. He proved scientifically that Hungarians, at least Kuns, came from the steppes of Kazakhstan. He considered himself Kazakh for the ideology and the mentality. He's an amazing person. Personal belongings, books about him and about Hungary, and photos and a mysterious portrait on the wall. Reproductions of works by the artist Geza Matsamoji, Kipchak King of Hungary, one of the most controversial figures in Eastern European history, Laszlo Kun. Kipchaks today are representatives of different nations, but all of them are Kipchaks. The Kipchak tribe, a tribal association which plays a very important role as a political force in the destinies of Eastern European peoples. At the same time, the Hungarians just became Christians, and in this Catholic country, the ruling elite suddenly becomes Turk. Chapter 1. The Day of Kunz. In the shopping tray are shirts and vests with Turkic ornaments. Hospitably, they open the door of the yurt. Large kettles with tasty fried meat. Horses and people are eagerly waiting for their battle for the title of the most skilled. The day of Kunz is the one of the most popular today. But what's this? Uh, and this is also Pishak, yes, a Bishke. Kun and Kipchak tribes in the 12th century lived in Hungary. They fought together with Hungarians against the Tatar-Mongol nomads. 1272, away from these quarrels and intrigues, you want to forget everything but the smell of steppe grasses. The boy, who had no childhood, became the ruler of all these lands when he was 10. Laszlo IV became king of Hungary, Kun Laszlo. The history of the past. Once upon a time, there lived two brothers, Kun and Kazakh, but it was their destiny to be separated. Kun, according to legend, chased a deer and was so engrossed in this pursuit that he left the steppes forever. It is unknown when this legend started. There were migration flows in the time of the Scythians and Huns, and in the 10th century, Hungary was headed by Arpad, the dynasty that came from the steppes. <laughs> Often Hungarians and Bulgarians referred to the Kipchaks. In the Caucasus, Georgia, Armenia, they referred to the military force of the Kipchaks. I counted at least 11 small Turkic ethnic subgroups in Eastern Europe, including the Magyar Huns, Kipchaks. In general, Magyars call all Turks Huns meaning arrived from the east, all nomads. It was not accidental that in the 13th century, 40,000 Kipchak families arrived on the shores of the Danube. 
It was a mutually beneficial alliance. They fled from Batukan and reinforced the army of the Hungarian King Bela IV. Chapter 2. The Kipchak King. In general, the castle was built by Hungarians, meaning Kuns, Huns, Kipchaks. Yes, it's one and the same people. It can be seen from any place in Budapest. The Buda Castle, the first royal residence, it was built by the grandfather of Laszlo Kun, King Bela IV, in the 13th century. At first, the castle was small. During the siege and during some wars, and just over time, these walls became destroyed, and then they built new ones. As far as I know, it's not yet clear whether the castle was established in the 12th century or later. Well, you know, the excavations are going on, so we'll see them. Official sources indicate about the 12th to 13th century. It was not the most quiet time in the history of Hungary, reigning monarch Bela and his son Istvan infighted for power and territory. In his time, King Bela did not only welcome the Kipchaks headed by Khan Koten, he became relatives with them. Bela married his son Stephen to Kipchak princess Irzabet, Irzabet Kuman. She is known by this name in history. It seems to be her baptismal name. The couple had a successor, Laszlo or Ladislav. Perhaps it was he who suffered the most from his father and grandfather's struggles. He experienced several kidnappings. He was married at eight crowned at the age of 10, and when he turned 15, the Hungarian assembly declared that the monarch has come of age and must rule without the help of a regent. The Kipchak king of Hungarians was Laszlo Kun. He preferred smoked horse meat to delights of French cuisine in general. He was a great lover of hunting. Everything Kipchak was in fashion, yurts dotted the countryside of Hungary. King Laszlo was called Kun, not just for the origin and the love for all Kipchaks, but the most loyal of his supporters, the personal guard, consisted only of the steppe people. Agalas were his Nagashi relatives on his mother's side. Such a close encounter with the nomads, of course, did cause dissatisfaction of the Hungarian aristocracy. Sometimes it was well-founded. Here, Kipchaks had the same lifestyle, their nomadic one, meaning they raided, seized women, extended their possessions, just as if they were nomads in Europe. The king was declared a pagan by a legate sent by the Pope, who threatened a crusade, and the Kipchaks received an ultimatum. The condition was to accept their religion. And a few more points. Kipchaks became liegemen to the barons and served in the army, led a settled life, and gave up their yurts. They will meet all Christian traditions except for shaving beards, cutting hair, and wearing their clothes, customs which esteemed Father Mr. Legek for the sound of insistent requests agreed with a soft fatherly kindness not to change them against their will. From the last of the fourth medieval laws of the Kingdom of Hungary. As Lokun forced them to adopt new laws, but was not in a hurry to fulfill the requirements. The Pope wrote, For a long time already, you were under the church. Tell your relatives to stop to honor idols. The most important condition to change the religion was fulfilled, but in its own way, they prayed in the Kipchak language. Chapter 3 The Call of the Ancestors. He wanted to write a book about the history of the Kipchaks in Hungary, where one of the main characters certainly would be the Kipchak king, Laszlo. Istvan Mandoki is a descendant of Hungarian aristocrats, a tireless researcher who traveled with the expeditions in the whole Turkic world. In 1974, he arrived in Kazakhstan for the first time. Well, being an acknowledged scientist, he had already written his doctoral thesis. By the way, his doctoral dissertation is titled Remainings of Kun, Kipchak language in the Hungarian language. 
it contains the medieval Lord's Prayer recited by the scientist, our father, in the Kipchak language. Hallowed be thy name. Yes, in the Kazakh language. We can understand these words without an interpreter as any Turks. I understood it when I read. This prayer is recorded in Vienna's historical documents. In the 18th century, Kipchak sent a delegation to Schönbrunn to the Empress Maria Theresa. They asked to return the autonomy and privileges granted by King Laszlo. Minimum taxes, landowners had no right to charge Kunz for riding through roads and bridges. This city center, the center of the big Kunzag, Kunz, Hungarians, once lived here. Karczak, the capital of Kipchak, Hungary. The city has real historical value in all aspects. Locals bought it for 17,800 florins during the tame trip to Vienna. And back in the days of Laszlo Kun, most likely the prayer in the Kipchak language appeared at that time. There's a book called The Accursed of Laszlo IV about how he ruled Hungary. Well, this is historical fiction. Maybe not all of it is true, but he was married to Isabella of Anjou, locked her in a dungeon, and the bishop was expelled from Hungary. So it was not possible to settle the world. Most Kipchaks did not accept new rules, the uprising began. And Laszlo Kun, as the head of his former enemies, the Pope's supporters, defeats the troops of yesterday's friends, the Kipchaks. The victory did not bring calm. In desperation, Laszlo left the capital and his wife and went to make peace with the Kipchaks. In addition, according to legend, his beloved one was waiting for him there. There is a famous rock opera in Hungary about the history of Laszlo Kun and the Kipchak girl, Edua. Among his beloved, her relatives, and his faithful horse here in the Hungarian wasteland, he found peace, even if not for too long. He was killed, it's also known, by the order of the Pope. He was stabbed with a poisoned dagger. According to another version, he was killed by offended Kipchak. It was a historical nonsense, and in general, very early at the age of 28, he was killed. But even after losing a patron of Laszlo IV, the steppe people slowly integrated into the society of Hungary. They had already forgotten their Turkic roots. They remained with historical self-identity as Kipchaks from the east. Yes, Kipchaks of the Great Steppe. They still have this feeling, although you will not find sub-ethnos of Kipchaks in any Hungarian catalogue. Kipchaks wore their traditional clothes until the end of the 14th century. They moved to houses around the same time. Moving was speeded up by granting lands for refused yurts, but Hungarian Kipchaks never forgot their roots. Epilogue, a spirit of relativity. A huge archive of hundreds of materials from expeditions and discoveries of Istvan Mandoki would be enough for a whole institute, said the museum's director, Ernard Masalin. So I tried to understand how European, who was born there and whose ancestors were Europeans, the Hungarians, but how he had suddenly awakened interest in the East. And not just the East, he was interested above all in the Kazakhs and Kyrgyz. Here in Kazakhstan, Istvan met his soulmate, changed his name to one familiar, to each Turk. Atlan means Atan, and here it is in the context it is coming back home. 
Konur is the heritage of Kipchaks who moved to Hungary. Therefore, he considered himself a diplomat, the ambassador of the people of the time. As the representative of Kipchak people of that time, Laszlo Kun, king, thirsting for strong power, did not betray his fellows. Two completely different characters, two completely different eras, two voices of the same blood. <laughs>